Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So as you can see here guys, um, medyo new yung ating look ngayon kasi naglalagay ako ng konting makeup. So yeah, I'm normally not wearing a so much makeup so bear with me today kasi that's how we look. Anyway guys, um, my video for today is going to be how to, um, um, how to get a visa to be here in Denmark. So back in 2017, I got my short stay, first ever short stay visa. So, ito yung mga kailangan yung ano guys, kailangan yung i-comply for you to be able to get the visa. So without further ado, let's get started. So keep on watching. So ayan guys, nandito ulit tayo. So this video is going to be Taglish. So that means Tagalog English. I couldn't speak um, fully English at the same time Tagalog. So if you have further questions guys, I am go you are just la have to leave a comment down below. So let's get started. So if you wanted to apply for a visa here in Denmark, you have to um, comply the requirements. So the things that you needed to have is you need to know. So you have to read more about the guidelines on how to get the visa itself. So back in 2017, we made a lot of research, a lot of reading, me and my husband, because um, he's been planning to bring me here in Denmark. So that's when we started um, uh, gathering more information for us to be able to um, group our documents or to gather all the documents that I needed to um, submit into a Danish embassy in Philippines. So if you are living in um, close to Cebu guys, um, meron silang Danish embassy sa Cebu. So I am living um, in Negros so I decided to go to Cebu to submit my application for visa. Pero I think there's much more Danish um, embassy sa Manila at the same time sa iba pang mga lugar. So, just um, check it out. So, ang alam ko lang is yung sa Cebu kasi basically, doon ako nag-apply myself. So, ito yung mga kailangan guys. Ito yung how to apply. So, sinulat ko talaga siya. So, ito yung paano ka mag-apply ng Danish um, visa or EU Schengen visa, Schengen visa or Danish visa. Kasi pag sinasabing Schengen visa guys, all around ay ano yun eh, EU or Europe. So basically ang uh, inaano ko dito is yung Denmark talaga kasi nandito ako ngayon sa Denmark and yan din yung ano ko experience ko lang din naman. So <clears throat> I am going to share with you yung experience ko sa pagkuha ng visa sa Denmark. So magsimula na tayo. So, how to apply? So, ang pag apply guys, is the host fill in an invitation. So, yung tinatawag na host is yung kapamilya mo na nandito sa Denmark is need nila na mag-send ng letter sa'yo. May kailangan silang fill upan. I think may mga papers na yan na pwede niyong ma-check online. So, yun yung kailangan i-fill up ng host or yung, kunyari, boyfriend or asawa mo yung mag-iimbita sa'yo or family mo family members mo. Sila yung mag-send ng le letter para i-print out mo. At saka need mo yung dalhin the moment na mag-apply ka. So, yun yung number one. The host fill in an invitation. O yung tinatawag nilang invitation letter. Isulat ko na lang yan dyan. Invitation letter. I think mga ano yun siya eh. Maraming pages yun guys. So, kailangan nyo talagang mag-ano. So, kailangan nyo talagang magbasa ng bonggang bongga. Maraming pages yun siya. Kailangan yung i-fill up lahat ng asawa or kapamilya mo na nandito sa Denmark. So, yung number two is, proceed tayo sa number two, gather documentation. Yung pag-gather ng documentation, guys, ibig sabihin nun, yung mga documents na kailangan mo para ma um, para maipasa mo doon sa ano Danish Embassy. So, ang kailangan mo lang is um, kailangan mong i-gather yung mga documentations na needed nila. And same as what I've said earlier, kailangan yung magbasa. Kailangan yung talagang mag, ano, mag, yung specific na documentations na kailangan nila. Maraming kailangan talaga, guys. At saka yung iba, nag-hire pa sila ng tao para mag-gawa doon. Pero in my case, ako yung gumawa. 
Um, ako lahat yung gumawa, tapos wala akong hire na kung ano-ano pa. Kasi may nakikilala ako doon nung pumunta ako sa embassy. May nakilala akong iba doon na sabi nila, nag-hire pa talaga sila ng tao para mag-gather ng information. Kaya nagdala sila ng sangkaterbang papel doon sa ano. Pero so far naman, pumasa naman yung sa akin. Tsaka hindi siya ganun karami. Ang inano ko lang talaga is specific and the most important. Yung lahat na importante na kailangan na si na itatanong talaga ng a-applyan mo doon, yun yung dapat mong gawin talaga. Hindi mo kailangan magdala ng napakaraming papel kung yun naman ay useless. So, um, search and reading is a must talaga. So, yun yung number two, gather documentation. Yung number three is submit application. Yung pag-submit ng application mo guys, you have to be there. Um, kailangan mong nandoon kasi... Pagkatapos niyan, um, may mga personal questions yan sila na itatanong sa'yo. Eh. It's about dun sa mga ano. Titignan niya nila isa-isa eh. Titignan nila yung uh, invitation letter, kung kompleto ba, ba yung mga papers na sinabmit mo. Yun. Um, they have lots of questions at the same time, you have to be there. Pero I think pwede ka namang mag-sente ng tao. Hindi ko lang alam kung relevant siya. Kasi in my own, ano guys, in my own experience... To much better talaga na nandoon ka, it's because kung may question sila, eh masasagot mo agad. Tsaka mahirap na yung ano, mag-email ka pa, mag- mag-text pa sila ng mga ano ka, kung ano-ano. Mas, mas maganda is personally nandoon ka para if ever may mga katunungan sila about sa mga documentations na kulang or whatsoever, makumply mo agad. So yun yung number three, submit application. You must be there personally. Yung ano ka talaga, personally present. So, yun. Tapos, yung pang-apat is yung pay fee. May payment ang visa, guys. May payment siya. Depende kung anong klaseng visa. Pero, I think yung um, working visa, I think mas mahal siya kaysa ano, sa tourist visa. Mas mahal ang working visa. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not forgotten it. Because, ano, a few years ago yun, guys, eh. May nakasama ako doon na babae. Um, I think yung mag i sa kanya is yung sister niya siguro. I'm not sure if it is also in Denmark. Pero yung isa kanya, iba yun. Mas mahal yung binayaran niya. I think nasa... I'm not really sure. Pero yung sa ano, sa, sa amin kasi, yung sa tourist visa, nasa 6,000 ba yun? 6,000, 7,000. Correct me if I'm wrong na lang, pero... Um, yun, kailang, it changes all the time kasi guys, eh. back on 2017 yun, tapos in 2018 nag-apply ulit kami kasi 2018 bumalik ako dito sa Denmark so I can't really remember kasi the first time that was on Cebu the second time nandun yung asawa ko so we were in Manila so we applied my um, second visa for, sa Manila so yun, hindi ko na masyadong maalala kasi I am not alone, tapos pare Parang wala akong alam kapag may kasama ako eh. So, yun. Sub, uh, yung ano yun, uh, pay fee. So, ang nakalagay dito is 60 euro. So, i-convert nyo na lang yan to Philippine money, 60 euro. Ang babayaran for um, short stay visa or yung ano, tourist visa. Tapos yung pang lima, lastly, is have your biometric features recorded. So, yung biometric guys, is yung, yun yung mga ano, fingerprints mo. Hindi lang isa ha, kaya, kaya sinasabi kong mga, kasi halos lahat ng ano mo, kukunin talaga. Tsaka itatanungin ka naman nila kung okay lang sa'yo. Pero syempre, you have to submit it kung gusto mong pumunta ng Denmark. So, yun lang guys. Um, yung number one is the host fill in an invitation. Number two is gather documentation. Number three is submit application. Number four is pay fee. Number five is... Have your biometrics or fingerprints recorded. So, kailangan after nyong maano guys, sasabihin naman niya nila if ever may kulang kayo sa documentation. If ever may mga na-miss out kayo ng mga documentations na needed nila, um, they will going to tell you. Um, I think the first time around, wala akong naging problema sa documentation, but the second time, meron. Kaya ang ginawa nila, nagpasent talaga sila sa akin ng... I think yung hiningi nila is yung very latest, ano ko, yung latest, ano ba yun? Birth certificate, hindi siya. Um, certificate of no marriage. 
certificate of no marriage, yun yung hiningi nila yung sa akin yung back on 2018. Pero yung first na pag-apply ko, wala akong naging problema. The second time around, ito lang yun. Yun lang yung um, certificate of no marriage ko. Kailangan kong isend sa kanila within um, certain range of time kasi ipaprocess pa nila yung papers. Pag hindi mo yun makuply, posible ka nilang i-denied. And they have every right to deny you kapag ka hindi naman kompleto yung mga papers na sinapnit mo. So, meron akong, madami akong nakilala din doon na patu, paulit-ulit na na-denied. Iwan ko kung bakit. Ganito kasi yan guys, eh, need nyo mag-read. Hindi nyo, hindi naman pwede yung Um, basta-basta na lang kayo maniniwala sa mga naririnig nyo or yun lang din yung dalhin nyo. You have to read para hindi ano, para hindi um, ano bang tawag nito? Hindi useless yung pera na ginastos nyo pag-process doon sa uh, mga papers or documentations para makapagpasa lang kayo ng um, application for a short stay visa. At anyway guys, this um, this um, This thing that I've explained to you is para lang to sa ano sa short stay visa. Yung short stay guys is 90 days lang siya pero yung sa akin last time ano lang yun eh hindi siya umabot ng 90 days kasi syempre kailangan mong lumabas ng bansa before 90 days. Kailangan mong lumabas ng Denmark or else magkaano ka magka problema ka at saka if you have a plan to get to go back magkaka problema ka talaga kaya To avoid it, you have to make sure na kompleto yung mga ano mo, mga dinadala mo. Kailangan mo rin pala ng insurance, ikakover din niya ng host or ng person na nag ano sa nagpapunta sa dito sa Denmark. So kailangan mo rin ng insurance, kailangan mo rin ng basta, madami kayong kailangan gawin. So yun lang yun. This is for short stay visa guys. Sa mga fiancé ano naman, wala akong idea. It's because I I haven't applied for fiancé visa before. So back when I go back to Philippines, ayan kailangan ko pa ring mag-attend ng CFO or yung tinatawag nilang kasi married na ako dito ngayon. But my visa before was only tourist visa. Inalo lang namin siya um uh, nag-apply ako ng Nagpakasal kami at the same time, nag, pagkatapos noon, nag-apply ako ng family reunification para makapag-stay ako dito. So, even though nag-expire ang visa ko, I am allowed to stay kasi nakapag-apply na kami ng family reunification. Tsaka, asawa ko na naman yung asawa ko ngayon. <laughs> so, yun. Pero you are not allowed, I think, guys, kapag ka, ano, basta marami siyang, marami siyang chichibureche. Kaya, reading is a must. And if you have more questions, guys, or if you wanted to read it all yourself, um, I'm gonna link the description down below sa aking ano sa aking video. I lilink ko lang yung link na kailangan yung makikita niyo doon lahat. Actually, yung you want to apply or have you you are waiting for an answer. At sa kaya yung waiting for an answer, guys, it only take takes me took me two weeks, I think. At saka dumating yung letter nila na I am granted. So, you will see if you meet the... Um, ano bang tawag nito? Yung application na sinabit mo is if na ano mo ba siya, na kompleto mo ba siya. So, yun. Um, you just have to wait two weeks approximately, normally. Kasi two times naman yun sa akin. Yun lang naman ang range. So, you will see if you are granted or denied. So, yun. Just stay calm na lang. At saka make sure na okay yung mga documentations na pinasa nyo. And anyway, guys, as what I've said, I am going to link the description description down below sa aking video. Kung may mga katanungan pa kayo, um, basahin nyo na lang yung ano, um, complete details doon para makita nyo rin lahat. So, thank you so much guys for watching and see you on my next vlog. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you do. And hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching. See you on my next vlog.